Hello and welcome to another Wargamer tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to paint Warlord Games FT-17 in a World War I inspired colour scheme. And for this I'll be using the Ammo Ranger paint by Mig Jimenez. After cleaning and preparing the miniature, the first task is to prime it. Now I'm using the MIG one-shot primer for this, and I'm using the grey colours. This will give me a really nice mid-tone in which to build up my pre-shading from. I'm using my airbrush at around about 20 psi for this step, and just lightly dusting the surface of the miniature. Now this will break the surface tension and allow the subsequent layers of paint to really adhere to the surface. Now this MIG one-shot primer is really great for this. You don't need to keep applying layer after layer, just a, a single layer is usually enough. After applying the primer, the first step is to apply some pre-shading. Now for this I'm using a grey base from MIG range, and I've mixed in roughly one part grey base to one part thinner. I'm going to be using this to apply some shading to the parts of the tank. Now this is going to be focusing particularly around the panel joints, and also towards the bottom of the tank as well. We just want to make some really nice gradients of shading down these recesses. Just be very controlled with your airbrushing sprays, especially when you get to the more intricate detailed areas. The advantage of pre-shading is that we can get all the desired shading effects before we actually start applying the colours, which means we don't need to use any uh, base, mid and light versions of the colour we want to finish with. Instead we can just use a dark grey, a mid grey and a white paint instead. The next step in pre-shading is to apply some matte white to the miniature. Now I'll be focusing this mainly around the panels, uh, leaving the darker recesses still visible at the bottom of the miniature and in between the panels. Again, for this step, I'm using my airbrush at around 20 psi, and I've also thinned down the matte white slightly, just to give me a better coverage over the surface. With the pre-shading completed, the next step is to start applying colour to the miniature. Now we're starting off with a base coat of warm sand yellow, and we want to apply this over the surface very lightly so that we can still see the shading in the recesses. Now this will form the basis of the three-tone camo scheme that we'll be going for. Now unless I say anything different, I'll be using all of my paints at around 20 psi, mix in roughly two parts paint to one part thinner. In order to achieve the three tone camo scheme that we want to go for here, I'll be using some blue tack. Now I'm rolling it out into long sausages and I'll be applying this over the surface of the miniature. Now the areas that I'll be applying it over will end up being the warm sand yellow in the end. So I want to just apply these uh, in thin strips going across the miniature and also joining up several of the stripes. Make sure you press down the blue tack uh, firmly to the miniature so that it adheres and masks off these areas nicely. Now the camo scheme that we're going for here has the brown sections always adjacent to a sand colour section. So I'll be doing this across the miniature, basically applying the paint next to the areas that we've applied the masking to. And I'll be just doing this in very small sections. After painting the brown areas, be sure to mask off the areas we've just painted, as we don't want to overspill onto them when we start painting the forest green. I'll be painting the forest green in much the same way as the previous steps, just lightly dusting it across the entirety of the miniature, making sure that I uh, completely cover everywhere that is visible. Now before we move the masking we want to first of all bring some highlights to the surface of the miniature. I'll be focusing this around the top sides of the miniature just to lighten the colour slightly. Now I'm using a mixture of a one part forest green, one part warm sand yellow and one part thinner for this. Now that we've achieved the colour scheme, you can actually remove the masking at this stage. and You can see the actual camo scheme that we've got here. Now the next step is to paint the tracks, and for this I'll be using brown soil. Now we're painting this over the surface of the tracks, and the entirety of the tracks should be covered for this step. Now you can use masking if you want to, it is dependent on your airbrushing abilities and how fine you can spray with your airbrush. The next step we'll see is highlighting some of the hatches, rivets and hinges dotted across the miniature. Now I'll be using the same colours that I used for the camo screen, which will be warm sand yellow, forest green and brown earth. And I'll be applying these to their respective areas, just using them with a brush to pick out some of the details. At this stage in the painting process, the tank is looking very pristine and we want to apply some dirt and grime to the surface of the miniature. Now for this, I'm using a mixture of one part brown earth and two parts thinner. I'm applying this with a brush over the entirety of the surface. You can see I'm using this downward motion across all of the panels and this will give us the effect that water has caused the mud and dirt to run down the sides. You really want to focus this into some of the recesses and especially around some of the detailed areas such as the rivets. 
With the wash completed, we can now start work on any surface accessories on the miniature. Now, this includes the exhaust and any other items that may be used as stowage. Now, for this, I'm starting off with a base coat of a red brown shadow. Now, I'm using this because it gives the effect of a dark, deep rust on the exposed metal surfaces, such as the exhaust. Now, we're applying this straight from the bottle, just using a brush for this step. The next step will see us continuing our work on the accessories. Now for this, I'm going to be using the red brown base paint. Now this is slightly lighter than what we used previously, and I'll be lightly dabbing this onto the surface of these areas just to really enhance the rust effect that we're going for here. For this next step, we'll be using a wash over the tracks to simulate rust and earth that has got embedded in between the track sections. Now for this, I'm using a mixture of one part brown clay and two parts thin. I'll just be washing this over the entirety of the tracks, making sure the wash seeps into all of the recesses. The final step in painting our Renault FT17 is to apply some rain streaks to the surface. Now for this, I'm using a mixture of one part pale grey and a one part thinner. Now this will be applied across the surface of the miniature using downward motions on a thin brush. Now this will create the effects of streaks and you can also rub your finger over the surface just to blend in uh, the rain streaks are slightly as well. And you supply this over the entirety of the miniature wherever you feel that rain would accumulate and run down the surfaces. And here we have the completed FT-17. Now this was my first proper airbrushing tutorial and I'm eager to hear what you guys thought of it. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of this tutorial and also what tutorials you'd like to see me tackle with an airbrush in the future. Now if you enjoyed this video, please do be sure to subscribe and also check out both my Facebook and Instagram pages which you can find links to in the description below. And finally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below as well. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really helped me in producing future content. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.